The Costa del Sol in the south of Spain is well known for having some beautiful clear water and some wonderful sights to see with a year-round tourist industry. So this could be considered a very fitting home for an interesting and historic vessel. This may explain why nestled at the back of this glorious marina, partially sunken and in a state of terrible disrepair, you will find Willow. A genuine American paddle steamer from the deep south with an interesting history. Seeing her in this state does raise some questions. What was her history? What was she used for? And how did she get here all the way from the mighty Mississippi River? Let's start our journey in Iowa in 1927 and we're at the Dubuque Boat and Boiler Works. Here, a new tender is being constructed as a replacement for an older lighthouse tender called the Oleander. This new tender, Willow, was built at a cost of $327,000, which would be $5.5 million in today's money. Her job was to work on the Mississippi River as a lighthouse ship. Her paddle wheels were 23 and a half feet tall with three foot buckets and they were powered by six boilers. But even with all that hardware, she was considered at the time to be rather underpowered, especially when fighting against the winds and the currents of the lower Mississippi region. This caused many of her trips back to work from New Orleans where she was berthed for the winter to be delayed. She was the last of the side wheel tenders in the lighthouse service. Moving forward to 1939, the lighthouse service was now merged with the US Coast Guard and Willow became a commissioned Coast Guard cutter. Willow worked hard throughout World War II, aiding navigation between New Orleans and Memphis. This went on until 1944 when, near Greenville, Willow collided with US LST-841 and she was said to have received considerable damage. This resulted in the decision that the cost of her repairs was prohibitive and Willow was officially decommissioned. And by 1945, her propulsion gear, including her huge side wheels, were removed and sold as scrap. The pilot house was removed, but a third deck was added. This was added because she was given a new job. She was to be a quarters boat for the Corps of Engineers and she served as a mess and berthing for labourers and even at one point housed German prisoners of war who were being used in the area for labour. So this was the first phase of Willow's life, and as you can see, even in her early years, it was a rather interesting life. But things were about to change for Willow now that she had been decommissioned. Her future was uncertain, and many periods of abandonment awaited her. The year is now 1962, and Willow has been sold to a private buyer, a Mr. A.J. Barron of Paducah, Kentucky, who planned to use her as a floating restaurant and motel. Sadly, though, this didn't happen, and as a result, Willow remained tied off at Paducah until 1965, when she was then sold onto the W.S. Young Construction Company, who towed Willow south down to New Orleans using a craft called the MV Southland. Young Construction used Willow briefly, although I cannot find out for what purpose. Soon though, the company suffered with financial difficulties and Willow's future was in jeopardy. Willow was tied off at Laplace, Louisiana when Hurricane Betsy came along. This caused the vessel to be beached high on a levee and while she was there she was vandalised and damaged further until she was rescued by the US Marshal of New Orleans. However though, this rescue was actually a seizure and Willow's troubles only continued from there. Soon, she was sold by auction and was purchased by Mrs. Frieda Parker, who was reported to have been a relative of the previous owner who was part of the Young Construction Company. Whether she made the purchase because she loved and cared for the vessel or just saw it as a profit-making opportunity, sadly, I don't know. Mrs. Parker doesn't appear to have done anything with Willow during her tenure of ownership and in the autumn of 1970, she sold Willow on. The new owners, Belizean Industry, bought her as an investment, hoping for a quick and profitable sale. 
One prospective buyer, as reported in the Waterways Journal, planned to operate Willow in British Honduras as a lobster factory. They even spent a reported $18,000 in renewing her 45-foot bow. However, the deal fell through and once again, Willow was left with nothing to do. An article in the Waterways Journal said this about the prospective purchase. The thought brought to mind pictures of a sweating, rusting hulk swarmed over by sweating, cussing lobstermen. Men who were not aware of or could not care less for the vessel's proud history. To this writer, it seemed an ignoble fate for a ship that was once considered the pride of the US Lighthouse Service. Now, with the possibility of becoming a lobster boat falling through, the years 1970 to 1973 saw Willow moored up in Harvey, Louisiana, and for sale with an asking price of $38,000, or $290,000 in today's money. There isn't too much information about the vessel during this time, with some reports saying she may well have been damaged and beached once again by another hurricane. But this could just be some confusion in her timeline, and they actually mean when this happened in the 1960s. But either way, she was basically now abandoned, and she lay there for many years. Jumping forward to 1989, and Willow is now 62 years old. And you can't imagine there would be much practical use for an old paddle steamer in the 80s and the 90s when technology was taking over all aspects of the world. But Willow received a lifeline and was purchased by a British company called Themes International, who soon transported Willow across the Atlantic Ocean to a new life. They transported her all the way across the Atlantic using a semi-submersible craft. And sadly, and I do mean sadly, I can't find any images of this interesting journey. But anyway, her destination was Southampton in the UK. She wasn't in Southampton very long though, and was soon transported over to a shipyard in Antwerp, Belgium, where she was to undergo refurbishment. But, as you may now guess from her unlucky history, Themes International went out of business before all the work can be completed, and once again Willow sat abandoned. This time, though, it was not for long, because in 1995 she was transported back across the English Channel to Birkenhead, where she would sit for just a year. Because in 1996 she was to make her final journey this far in her history. She was on her way to Benelmadna Marina in the south of Spain. And her excited new owners had grand plans for her future. The floating bar, restaurant and entertainment venue called Mississippi Willow was soon opened and it was something completely different for the area. I mean, it's a rare sight to see a genuine Mississippi paddle steamer this far from its home. Significant money had been spent on her interior and from all accounts she was a well laid out and useful venue. I like to think that if Willow was capable of having emotions, she may well now have thought that her luck had changed and her bad days were now behind her and be looking forward to a bright future, with many tourists visiting her and admiring her. But as history with this vessel tells us, her days as a restaurant were sadly not long lived. By 1998, her owners had gone out of business and she has not been used since then. Just sitting lonely at the back of a marina, slowly deteriorating with no real maintenance, upkeep or the love of a proud owner. Due to the lack of maintenance, Willow's hull continued to deteriorate and she began taking on water, slowly sinking. The depth of the water she is sitting in is only 3.7 metres deep, so parts of her are touching the bottom. In 2019, divers went down to survey the damage and see what could be done to prevent further water ingress, and apparently minor work was carried out. Whatever work was done at the time does not appear to have solved all the issues to her hull. So here we are, it's today, and we're back where we started with this story, and Willow looks in terrible condition and is partially submerged. 
Will she ever be saved and receive the refurbishment work she desperately needs? The signs aren't good, and as more years tick away and her condition continues to worsen, the cost of all the work needed to bring her back will continue to rise. And sadly, it does seem that you've got to say now the odds are slim for Willow's future. 